Hello everyone. Today is the day that we're taking the supercharged Corolla XRS on its first test drive. I'm very excited for this because not only is this my first time driving the supercharged XRS, this is my first time driving any supercharged car. Will it have more down low torque? Probably. Will it be a bit quicker? Probably. So I'm very excited to get it out on the road for the very first time and feel out what the car drives like now. Before we start, I'll give you a little reminder of what the engine bay looks like now with the supercharger because I just can't help but love looking at it. The supercharger is very here in your face, look at me. The one thing I do wanna note is when I finished the install and I took it out of the garage for the first time uh, to move it around a little bit, the belt was squealing at anything above uh, 2500 RPM. The belt was a little bit too loose. So what I did, and you can probably see it here, is I stole the alternator underdrive pulley from the Turbo Corolla, put it on this one, and now the belt tension is perfect. That there is the only thing that's changed since the last video. And now let's close it up, open the door, and let's take the XRS on its first test drive in supercharged form. Alrighty, it is time to drive the supercharged XRS. So first things first, before we start it up, got the laptop here open up the ECU master software. There it is. USB is down here. Plug it in. And then all I'm really doing with this is just having the log open. And actually I want to have this up and tune display there. Okay, so that's set up how I want it. And Let's give it a start. Connected, should say connected. Is it connected? Connected and... All right, starts up. Okay, idle should settle down. So now I'm gonna let the car warm up because I did notice that when, oh, all of a sudden it's gone rich. And actually I do, since I'm not used to looking at Lambda for um, figuring out the oxygen sensor, I'm more used to looking at AFR to see that. I'm gonna pull up an AFR gauge too here. This is so fun. I've got a Corolla with a laptop now. <laughs> also another reason why I wanna let this thing warm up is because I noticed that when it's cold, if you step on the gas, Sometimes it likes to bog down slightly. Yeah, every time I step on the gas, it bogs down a little bit and then goes back to normal. And it stops doing that once it's warm. There's tables on the software to mess with cold starting and uh, the warm up process. So small tune issue, um, but we'll get it out on the road and see if uh, the base map is enough to just drive around. Also, one more thing I wanna note is the coolant gauge on the dash no longer does anything. It is always constantly cold. The only way I can see coolant temperature now is on the laptop, looking at the CLT right there. That no longer works. I would like to get that working. In order to get that working, I'll need to reconnect the stock ECU and wire that in so that the stock ECU reads the coolant temperature. But all the other gauges work. The tachometer is working, speedometer is working, fuel gauge is working. Nothing's leaking. Oh, everything looks fine. All right, let's go for a little drive. Hello, everybody. Don't mind the GoPro on my head. I'm just a I'm just a silly guy who likes to record himself driving. And bogged down a little bit there. And now it's normal. Okay. I have heard before that bolting a supercharger to your car basically makes it feel like it has a bigger engine. Honestly, pretty accurate. That's that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. The 
amount of gas pedal I would use normally during normal day-to-day -day driving, it, it brings me up to the speed limit a little bit quicker now. I love that even under normal driving, I can still hear the supercharger whine. <laughs> it's pretty cool. 69 degrees Celsius is the coolant temperature, so it's pretty close to fully warmed up. I have fully warmed up this car before, and it looks like it tops out anywhere between 70 and 72 degrees Celsius, which honestly seems a bit low to me. Uh, I don't know if the sensors got an issue, or it's just the way it's reading, or that is the normal operating temperature. That seems kind of low. So far, with the supercharger, it feels like a normal car. It doesn't feel like I've really done anything to it, just normal driving it around, which is quite good. That's actually exactly what I wanted. I don't hate how the 2ZZ drives. One of the things I did wish it have was more torque. It now has more torque. It doesn't take as much effort to get up to the speed limit now. Like here we are at 40 already. So in a way, the superchargers made this car more dailyable, which is great. All right, we'll do a first gear and second gear pull. Engine light. Maybe we'll not do a second gear pull. Also, there's people here. I saw the engine light come on which is not a good sign. I am data logging here, so I am going to do another pull and then take a look on the laptop uh, when we get back. I don't want to abuse it. I think I'm going to do one pull close to 8,000 RPM. I don't want to push my luck because that is uh, a tad concerning. And let's see. It pulls nice. It's like, it doesn't feel bad. It didn't feel like it was cutting out, but the engine light is there. So it's detecting something wrong. That didn't feel bad. That was nice. That was nice. This car got some extra kick now. We'll do another second gear pull. Yeah, here. This is pretty open. I'm gonna see if I can bring it up a little bit closer to red line. Engine light. Right, brought it to 8,000. Sorry, that might have hurt you. I hope it didn't, but I'm just trying to get a more complete data log here. But again, it pulled nicely. It didn't feel like it was holding back, so I don't understand what's wrong. I guess I am going to understand once I look at all this data here. This should tell me what's going on, hopefully. Ah, if that wasn't there, I would be so excited right now. And I still am. This car drives great now. Well, I mean, great in the sense of it's faster and it, the pull felt really nice, but that's killed my mood. The engine light coming on has killed my mood because now I'm just concerned that it's got some issues that really need sorting out. Otherwise, why would the light be on? It doesn't come on when you floor it if you're not above 5,000. It didn't come on then. Oh yeah, and for those of you who are bothered by the massive crack on the windshield, yes, I am going to fix it. I just need to make an appointment with Safe Flight so they can replace that. But that's not my biggest concern right now. As long as I can see, it's okay. My biggest concern is what's going on here. All right. So let's switch it off. A bit shorter of a test drive than I would have liked. Now let's go ahead and pause this as well. And actually let's save that. I want to save this data log here. And now I want to look at what's going on. It's disconnected. So let's take a look. First thing I want to know is what causes the light to come on. So uh, let's see here. Engine protection. So this is what I'm looking at. So the engine light should come on if the oxygen sensor goes bad. 
if the intake air temperature sensor goes bad, if the coolant temperature goes bad, if the map sensor goes bad, and it looks like report knocking is the only one that shows up under certain engine conditions. The rest of these just show up if sensors go bad. So it looks like our engine light coming on uh, while doing a pull is knocking, which is very worrying. Two ZZs do not do well with knocking. They will go very, very quickly uh, with too much knocking. So that's quite a concern. I'm going to assume it's a tune related problem. Right, the main thing that I wanna see here is this graph log that we just did. Okay, I think I see what's going on. So I'm looking at the first pull here. That would be this one, this first gear pull going up to 6,800 RPM, knock sensor value. Right there, 2.75 and it looks like it's in volts. And I had another graph open here that also displayed knock sensor value a little bit more clear. You can see it's pretty down low right here. As soon as we do a pull, it goes way up. So that's why a tune is very important because otherwise I'm probably gonna kill this engine. Right, let's keep going. It goes even higher this time. Look, it goes up to 4.39 right up here. And that was when we took it close to 8,000. Yeah, again, doing a pull, spikes really sharply and then spikes way up here. The air to fuel doesn't look bad though. It's knocking, but air to fuel looks like it's pretty much on target during a pull. If it's not an issue with air to fuel ratio, then we're probably looking at an ignition problem. Well, let's see. Ignition angle right there, actually. 14. That is actually pretty low. I would have expected this ignition angle to be uh, more advanced than that. And then I think I did one more pull. It's probably gonna be a pretty similar story um, of the knock events. There we go. This is the highest RPM. We took it to 82.39 at the peak. The knock event, but this spot is 3.39, but peaked at 4.96. I did one more mini pull coming back here. That would be this one. Yeah, I did a little pull turning back here. That did not trip the engine light. And yeah, the knock sensor value way down here at 1.18, peaking here at 1.82. So engine light coming on for knock. That was not a pleasant surprise. I was hoping this first drive would be a bit smoother than that, but we did get a couple pulls in. And while those poles seemed like they were knocking, the car didn't even feel that bad. It pulled pretty nicely. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised by that. I was pleasantly surprised by how the car drove. I was not pleasantly surprised by the fact that uh, if I do this too much, it's gonna blow the engine. <laughs> We've got some stuff to fix. I should have, I should have um, expected something to go wrong though, since this is only a base map. I think I was a bit spoiled since everything went so well when I did the first drive with the Turbo Corolla on the base map, but I guess it makes sense since that is a piggyback, so there's a few less things to go wrong, whereas this one is a standalone, so the map had to be built basically from the ground up, and there's just more stuff that goes into building a base map for a standalone versus a base map for a piggyback. I have got to get this thing tuned really, really badly. So that concludes the first drive of the Supercharged XRS. That was a much shorter test drive than I wanted. Not exactly the results uh, that I wanted. I was hoping that this car would get out there even on the base map and just be usable in the entire RPM range, which it kind of is. The few pulls I did do felt pretty good. Car feels faster, albeit, um, it's seemingly not exactly in a healthy state right now, but felt a good bit quicker. I don't think so much as uh, if I put a turbo on it. The turbo Corolla was a much more dramatic difference than 
with the supercharger on this car. But I'm not complaining too much. This is actually kind of perfect. I don't need the XRS to be extremely fast. The supercharger added that low end torque that I really wanted out of this car, which let's be honest, turbos having to spool up aren't exactly the best for giving low end torque. Even though it's not as dramatic of a difference as it would have been with a turbocharger, I'm still very happy with it. So I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully you guys aren't too disappointed with how short today's test drive was. Trust me, I really wanted to be out there longer too, but I'm not going to abuse and kill my car for a YouTube video. That's just not a good idea. Thank you all very much for watching me today. I do greatly appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.